Hi everyone, I'm Gertie, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this fabulous hat. So we're calling this the Charm Scout hat. Hopefully you've seen what I'm doing on Patreon. We're doing a whole year called Camp Gertie of scouting themes with a vintage twist. So obviously I was inspired by Troop Beverly Hills and Phyllis Neffler in her fabulous uniform to make this cool hat. So I will say this style of hat, it's called a garrison hat. This was, the one I made was based on a Boy Scout hat from the 50s. Very fabulous. But if you're not into the scouting thing, this hat was used in so many instances in history. Obviously, World War II military uniforms, soda jerk uniforms, stewardess uniforms, Britney Spears and Toxic. You can see it everywhere. So I really hope that you'll find this pattern super useful, whatever you're doing with it, making costumes or cosplay, historical reenactment. You can find the pattern on my website, on the Charm Patterns website. So go ahead and download it along with the written instructions and today I'm going to show you how to sew it so let's get started okay let's talk very briefly about fabric and supplies so for my hat I am going to be using this double wool crepe that's very light in color and just slightly sheer so I have to take that into consideration and not use a dark lining or anything like that so you can use anything like a cotton twill that would be very traditional um, something with a little bit of body um, if your fabric is on the drapier side you can always interface the pieces you will also need some piping so i really love to use this Wright's maxi piping uh, and i've already designed the hat to have the correct seam allowance to use this width of piping so this comes in a lot of colors i'm using this lovely jungle green color okay so pattern pieces there's only two main pattern pieces you have the main hat pattern and you're gonna cut that in your fabric. You're gonna cut two of it. So on a double layer, I cut my fabric. You'll also want to cut your lining in this, uh, with this pattern piece. I'm just doing a muslin lining. I wanted you guys to be able to see the contrast between the two pieces. Muslin is also great because it's readily available. I cut up an old um, test version of something I was working on and um, it has a little bit of body, which is nice for this hat because you want something that's gonna stand up against your outer hat fabric. Okay, and the only thing you need to mark on this piece is this little circle right here. So just something to note about this little circle, it will help you figure out which is supposed to be the front side of the hat. So this seam over here, closer to the circle, is the center front of the hat. Okay, and then you also have piece number two, your hat band, which is the piped piece that overlaps in the front. So you're just gonna cut two of this in your fabric, and optionally, you can also cut this in some fusible interfacing. I used a white woven interfacing that I have already fused to my fabric. And this is gonna help me just add a little opacity to my band. I didn't use fusible interfacing on my early versions and just noticed I could see the piping through the overlap. So if you have a little bit of sheerness to your fabric, just a little layer of um, opaque fusible interfacing will help deal with that. So two fabric, two interfacing if you like. You're going to want to also mark your circle on this piece. I like to use, just by the way, these disappearing ink markers. And there's also a notch for you to mark here. And I just drew mine in. And then what you're going to do, you don't have to draw yours in. I just wanted you to see where it is when we're looking at these pieces together. Just do the tiniest little snip into your seam allowances right there. Don't go past a quarter inch. We have very tiny seam allowances on this hat pattern. So only a quarter inch. So obviously you don't want your snip to go into your hat. So just make a tiny little snip there. All right, so the first thing we're going to do sewing wise is sew the center back seam on the hat band. So we have two of these already fused. I am going to pin along, oh, I don't have my pins. All right, when I grab my pins, I'm going to pin along this short end right here and we're going to go to the machine and sew this at a quarter inch with the right sides together. So let's head to the sewing machine. 
Okay, I found my pin cushion. I pinned the short end of my hat band, and now I'm going to sew these pieces together, right sides together, using a quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, and I'm gonna be using contrasting thread here so that you can see my stitching, but you'll want to match your thread to your main hat collar. So back stitch there, I'm using a straight stitch and a length of about two and a half millimeters. And back stitch at the other end. Okay, so just a tiny little seam there. The first thing we're going to do, because this is a short little curve, I'm gonna do a couple little notches in the seam allowance and you want to do a notch like this anytime you have an outer curve or a uh, a, cur <laughs> a curve that goes outward like this. You want to do a, a few little notches to help your seam lay flat. Okay, we're going to press this. And again, because it's a curved seam here, it's nice to have a seam a lot or to have a um a tailor tam to help you press your curved seam. So you can just put your band on top of your ham, find the curve, and then just press the seam allowance open. You can give it some steam. And there we go. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk about how to do the piping on this band. So let's go back to the table and work on this flat. Okay, so here is what your band piece is going to look like when you lay it flat right side up now. Um, forms a, a slight V. And we are going to be piping this upper edge of the band. So you're going to grab your piping and like I said earlier, I've chosen this pre-made piping because it has a 3 8 of an inch flange and therefore designed this pattern with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance at the top. So we can just align our raw edges here. Oh, and if you don't know the term flange on piping, it means this distance from where you see the stitching next to the cording to the raw edge. So that is 3 8 of an inch. It's essentially the seam allowance on the piping. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to start placing the piping with the raw edges aligned with the upper edge of the band. And you can put some pins in it like this. Your, when I put pins in something, I'm always thinking about what direction am I going to be putting the piece into the machine. And if you think about it, you normally have the bulk of the work to the left of your needle. So I know it's going to go in the machine this way. So putting the pins this way makes it easier for me to pull them out as I sew. Okay, so all the way around this upper edge, you do have a slight little pivot point at the center back seam. So keep that in mind. You're going to stop there with your needle down and just do a slight pivot. And I'm just gonna finish pinning along this upper edge and then we'll go over to the machine and stitch this piping on. Okay, now we're ready to stitch our piping to our band. So I would recommend that you grab your My Little Pony cup full of presser feet and you find your, oh, it's right here. It's not even in the cup. You find your zipper foot. This is the foot I like to use for piping. You may have a specialty piping foot and if you love it, just use that. I don't have one, so I just use my zipper foot. I'm going to move my needle to the left of the foot so I can get as close as possible to the cord on the piping. And I'm just going to start stitching with a regular stitch length. You're going to take this slow because what you're looking for is to get as close, see how there's stitching already on the piping? You're looking to get as close as possible to that stitching with your needle here. So 
what can kind of happen is that your presser foot tries to push your piping over to the left. So just kind of keep an eye on that and get as close as possible. You want to ideally be on top of that stitching on the piping. And you can kind of hold the piping in place with the thumb on your right hand as well. So it doesn't start slipping over. And just take out your pins as you go and stitch along this whole band. And don't forget to pivot at that center back seam. Okay, so once you've finished stitching the piping on, the next thing we're going to do is go to your ironing board and you're going to turn the flange of the piping to the wrong side of the band like this so that only the cord of the piping is exposed. So you're gonna do this from the wrong side and you're going to press the piping in place all along the upper edge. Like this, so that's what you should be seeing from the right side, looking pretty cool, right? So keep going with this, and you can also, when you get to this pivot point, you can also do a little clip right there to help those seam allowance seam allowances lay flatter. Okay, so keep pressing, and then the next thing we're gonna do is stitch this piping in place by edge stitching right here. Okay, you've pressed the piping to the wrong side all along the upper edge of the band, the band, <laughs> the band that is. So hopefully you can see how awesome this is gonna look and you're getting excited about your hat. The next thing we're going to do is stitch this in place. Now I'm going to try using an edge stitch foot here. This is another part of the process that you're going to want to take very slowly Take your time. I love this edge stitch foot. It has this blade down the center, which can help you align your stitching. And also you can move your needle to the other side of it, get like an eighth of an inch away from the blade. So it's a pretty handy little foot to have. You can also substitute a blind hem foot um, for a different purpose here because it has this blade on it as well. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to align the blade so that it's just to the left of where the piping meets the hat fabric. And I made my stitch length just a little bit longer. Top stitching always looks a little bit nicer in longer stitches. So you can go up to three, three and a half around there. Okay, so I'm aligning my blade on my presser foot so it is just next to that edge right there. And so you can see I'm just getting a really close edge stitch with my dark green thread here. I would recommend for you, I would really recommend using thread that matches your hat fabric, especially if you're not super confident with edge stitching and top stitching in a really straight line. Because then it'll just blend in a little nicer. But I'm just gonna take this really slow and try to get a nice consistent line of stitching here. Okay, so I finished my first row of top stitching along here. Um, it's, a, it's a little crooked, don't judge me. It's really hard to stitch straight with this camera in front of my face. And also it's in a dark color, so I'm just saying. 
Okay, so the next thing that you can do, and I'm borrowing this detail from that vintage Boy Scout hat that I showed you in the intro, it had two rows of top stitching around the piping, which I thought looked really sharp. And it also helps hold the piping down very flat. So why not? Let's do another row. So I'm gonna use my edge stitch foot again. I'm going to align the blade with the row of stitching I just did and then move my needle as far as I can to the left. So that will give me a nice equidistant row of stitching from my first line of stitching. So you can see I'm just using the blade to align with my previous line of stitching and getting two lines right next to each other. Again, this is totally optional. You can do just the first row of edge stitching if you prefer. Okay, so it's just like a nice little detail. You see it a lot in uniforms and um, workwear, kind of vintage, with vintage vibes. Once you've finished your top stitching, one thing you can do is just now, see how now we've turned in this seam allowance at that point at the end, it's, you have some excess right there. You can just trim that away. That's just the seam allowance, fold it down. So we don't need that. And it's also some excess piping. So there we go, just gonna get rid of that. And now your band is done for the time being. So you can just put it to the side and now we're gonna concentrate on the hat itself. So remember you've got two, two sets of this pattern piece cut out. You've got your outer hat and your lining. So what we're going to do is sew these together around the curved upper edge here. So I'm gonna pin these first. This straight lower edge, we're gonna to leave totally open because it needs to go on your head. So you're gonna leave that open, just pin and stitch around the upper edge for both the hat and the lining. So next I would pin the lining pieces and you're gonna take this to your machine. I'm gonna take my edge stitch foot off. I'm gonna make sure that I realign my needle in the center here. And I can go back to my regular stitch length that I would use for seams, which is around two and a half. Okay. So again, quarter inch seam allowance. Straight stitch. And just go for it. Stitch all the way around this upper edge. have stitched that seam, we're going to press it open. But first I would recommend, just like we did on that short center back seam on the band, give yourself a few notches around here. Because again, this is an outer curve, so these notches are going to help our seam lay nice and flat.
After notching, what you're going to do is press these seam allowances open. So you're gonna take your ham and put it inside your little hat here. Then you're gonna grab your iron and just all the way around, you're going to press this seam allowance open. So obviously it takes a little coordination to hold the ham with your left hand and iron with your right or vice versa. And so you're gonna keep going with that and keep shifting the hat around the curves of the ham. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going with this and then when we come back, I'll talk about how to sew the lining. Okay, so I pressed my seam allowances open and the next thing I would recommend that you do is turn it right side out and to just get a super crisp seam right here, now you can press it flat. So you're just gonna roll those edges all the way out. So the seam line is right on the edge. And just give it a nice flat press. This style of hat is meant to be very flat when it's not worn. It's sometimes called an envelope hat actually because it looks like a flat envelope that opens up and then you put it on your head and it has this great dimension to it. Okay, so nice and flat. And then let's talk about our lining. So one thing that's really important is that you don't want to stitch all the way around here. You're going to leave yourself an opening at the top, about right here. Give yourself about three inches right here, enough to turn the hat right side out. Okay, so I just gave myself some little marks to remind myself not to stitch all the way around. But from here on out, this is the same as sewing the outer hat, except for leaving that opening. <laughs> so I'm gonna start stitching at a quarter inch. And then when I get to my first X, I'm going to backstitch and actually break my stitching, pull out the machine, trim those threads. And then I can start up again at my second X. So the next few steps are the same as they were for the outer hat. You're just gonna do those notches. You're going to press the seam allowances open. And in this opening right here, you're going to turn the seam allowances down. So just turn in a quarter inch to the wrong side there so that it's prepped for us to stitch it closed in the final steps of this hat. All right, so I'm going to just keep going around here, press open and then press flat, just like we did with the outer hat. And then we're going to be ready to put the band onto the hat itself. All right, so you can see that I've finished pressing my muslin lining here. I did the same steps where I pressed it to the, I, with the right side out, you can see my opening right here with the edges pressed to the wrong side. And so we're just gonna put this just to the side for just a second. And you're going to grab your outer hat, right? And your band. And you're going to apply the band to the outside of the hat. So you're looking at the right side of both pieces. And you can start at center back if you like. That's a nice little match point there. Make sure your seam allowances stay open. And we're just gonna match the raw edges of both pieces and pin together. Now, here's another little match point. This notch, remember we talked about in one of the earlier scenes, this notch right here is going to match the center front seam on the hat. So that's a little match point for you. And then, so let's see, I always have to touch my hat to remember which side it wraps around to. So 
Let's see. It's going to wrap around to the left, right? Okay, so the right side, the one I'm pinning, is the underlap. So, and remember these little circles we looked at earlier? That is your match point for the end of the band. So I'll do that. Okay, so there's one side pinned, wraps around, and let's do the other side. So this is gonna be the side that overlaps. Match your center front seams again with the notches. Like so. And there's your little overlap. Make sure that it matches your circle mark. Okay, and you can see this coming together now into a beautiful garrison style hat. Next thing we're going to do is baste the layers together. So put your machine stitching length at like a four or five. And I'm going to, you can start wherever really. I'm gonna start at this overlap point. And your basting should be a little bit less than a quarter inch, which is not a lot. So just take this slow, because you don't have a lot of fabric you're working with here. So that basting stitching was just to hold those two layers together so we don't have to worry about things slipping out of place when we do the next step, which is to put the lining on, which is going to finish this lower edge of the hat. So turn your lining so it's wrong side out again, and you're going to put the outer hat inside the lining like this. And I actually, Good little tip here, something I almost just did wrong. Remember that circle right here, how that denotes the center front of the hat. It's closer to the center front. So make sure that that circle is closer to the center front of your outer hat here. Okay, so we're just gonna put the hat inside the lining and you're going to, again, pin along the lower edge matching those raw edges, matching your center back seams. And now when we go to stitch these together, we're not basting anymore. This is for real this time. You're going to go back to your regular stitch length. So about two and a half on your machine. And you can start anywhere you like. Um, I'm gonna start at you know, one, the middle of one side. And now you're going to be using your full quarter inch seam allowance. So we shouldn't see the basting that we just did because it's gonna be hidden within the seam allowance. But if some of it does show, it's not a huge deal. You can always just take those out later, those stitches out. So once you finish that round of stitching, the next thing we're going to do is turn the hat so that it's right side out through this hole in the lining. Now, as you're doing this, 
you can check the lower edge of the hat where you just stitched to make sure that you're happy with how your stitching looks, that you don't have any exposed seam allowances down here, especially where you have the overlap. Here's a little example of some basting showing. I can just take those out later. Actually, it might not even show, but just check your stitching, make sure you're happy with everything here. So now we have like a little hat bag kind of thing. The next thing we're going to do is secure these layers so that the lining is to the inside of the hat. Okay, so now take the lining and push it inside the hat. And at the same time, take the band and flip it down. Okay, away from the hat itself. Okay, and just make sure that your lining and the outer hat are together. And now the next thing we're going to do is a line of stitching at about a quarter inch right around here through the layers of the hat and the lining below it that are going to keep the edge really nice and flat. So let's put this on the machine like this. Again, I'm just starting at the middle of one long edge. And you're just going to kind of hold the band away from the hat and make sure that all your layers underneath here are nice and flat. You don't want the line to kind of bunch up underneath there. So kind of use your hand to make sure that it's flat as you go. And I'm aligning the edge of my foot with the edge of my pink hat fabric here. Back stitch, and we're just going to stitch like this all the way around. When you're finished with that row of stitching, now you can turn your band to its rightful place the outside of the hat. And now it's time to do some serious pressing. So what you wanna see is the lining should be slightly to the inside of the hat like this and you want to get all these layers nice and flat. And I would also suggest that you really get a nice flat press at center front, which helps you get kind of an angle at center front. So I'm gonna spend some quality time with my iron right now. It's gotta heat up again. So I'm gonna press this flat. You can also go in between the layers and press that edge. That's something you can do if you wanna do one layer at a time. But again, I really recommend also steaming that center front to get a nice crisp point there. So really don't skimp on the ironing. You want a nice flat look. So I may go back and do some more, but you get the idea for now. Okay, so the last thing, and then your hat is done, is to close this hole on the inside of the lining. Now, if you like to hand stitch, you can go ahead and just hand stitch this close. I will say there's also a super lazy, effective way to do this, especially if you're making this for a party or a performance and you need to be out the door right now. This is super fast and very easy. Just pin those two edges closed, and now we're gonna edge stitch right next to the fold to close this lining by machine. Okay, and just trim your threads. And if your lining is very floppy and doesn't want to stay to the inside of the hat, I will say one final thing you might want to do is go on the inside here and tack the layers together so you can tack the lining to the seam allowances of the hat underneath it. 
but that's not 100% required. It's just if you have like a very a silkier lining fabric. So there you go. Lovely lined hat. Okay, everyone, you have a beautiful finished Charm Scout hat so you can live your Phyllis Neffler fantasy. I hope you love it, whatever you make this hat for. And don't forget, I do monthly projects on Patreon. So if you're looking for more of my videos, more downloadable patterns, come join us. It's so much fun. And as always, I upload projects here on YouTube as well. So don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.